It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Grizzlies on the Hunt. Uh, good evening, everybody. I have Psychic Sonia from Tennessee. The story Hello. comes with a twist. Hello, Sonia. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Wonderful. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about uh, your background? Um. I'm Sonia. I'm 36. I'm from East Tennessee. I'm a psychic medium and healer from like, like since I was little, you know, I've had gifts and things. And I also have um a bunch of, you know, cryptid things that live uh, out here with me. And um, yeah, I don't know. Wow. That's <laughs> like, interesting. I mean, <laughs> so how young did you realize that you had abilities? Uh, when I was four, the uh, first time I can remember, like, ever having, like, any kind of, like, that little voice inside my head that wasn't, like, just me, you know, that I was aware. Right. Yeah. Right. Before my sister was trying to drown me in a bathtub. And what? And, yeah, she tried. Okay. So she had done that before and she was holding me under the water and something come over me. Like, it was just like this little voice come inside me and it wasn't me. And it was like, Sonia, you've got to fight. You've got to fight her. She's going to kill you. You've got to do something. And, and I was like, Oh my God, you know? And I, I grabbed the soap dish on the wall and I pulled the whole bathroom wall down. Yeah. She stopped. So, <laughs> wow. Trying to grab me. Wow. But yeah. I mean, so uh, that, so pretty much, I guess we call it a near death experience an NDE then, or. Well, I was always like, I, I was just like, that's the first time I can remember ever like really listening to the voice. It was always there. It was just like, you know, do you want to do that? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You know, it's like that little voice. Right. And just, but I was so timid when I was little, like um, I was really shy. And I think that's another, another reason why that I was shy was because I could, I could hear that, you know, I could hear other people's little voice in their head too. And oh, wow. that would make, yeah, that would make me very self-conscious. And because a lot of the time people are walking around thinking horrible things about themselves. And when you're an empath, like when those people are thinking those things about themselves, you think they're thinking them about you because you're hearing them and you, and they're looking at you and you're just, you know, you associate that with, it's hard to just break that whole, um, like, uh, you know, that, that connection with people that they're thinking that about themselves and not about you. You know, so I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, there's a lot of that. So I don't know. It's been, a, yeah. it's, it, it was a, it was a tough start, especially being out where I live in East Tennessee, you know, having any kind of like, having any kind of um, gifts or abilities or anything that's not, I guess, well, I guess any kind of witchcraft is what they would call it. And I, that's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't mind being called a witch. I think I am a witch. Um, <laughs> So, but like, you know, I got called a devil worshiper since I was little and just all this other stuff. But when I was, when I was little, you know, you didn't ever tell anybody that you would hear these voices in your head and you wouldn't tell people because I like growing up, I remember they would put you in a nut house or they would think that you had. Right. Yeah. Friend. And I was thinking about that today. Like, and I, like it broke my heart. How many people were, are, were in insane asylums because, because they were empaths. And I mean, Wow. Right. And to torture themselves to have to go into a mental facility where like the, you know, especially within the last couple hundred years, what that would be like, you know, that's uh, that's a real tortured soul, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, taking psychology, the biggest problem I had was taking a person in class and sitting them down and identifying them with some type of syndrome then putting medicine down their throat and sending them on the way and say, next. And I always told my professor, I'm like, professor, what if he was like, Grizzly, take the class. I'm like, but what if Grizzly, take the class? I'm like, but, but professor, kids see things. People hear things. He's like, Grizzly, take the class. So I ended up taking the class. But my thing is, is that I do believe people see things. 
I do believe people hear things. Yes, I do believe in the afterlife and the paranormal. I do believe in psychics and mediums and empaths. It, it, it's true. Now, do I believe that we have people across the nation and globally that have mental health problems and issues? Absolutely, I do. So there is a fine line. But that Yeah, and, and you never know when it, it's because they develop these mental issues because they're not they've been told that you're not supposed to hear voices and some people, you know, right. some people don't even know that you're supposed to hear your own voice inside your head. And you know, it's, you know, yeah, that, that's a no, no. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a no, no. People don't hear that. Like some people just act and they don't think, and that that's a real thing. So, you know, I so think how- a lot of people have abilities, but I don't think they're ever taught to use them. And if, it's a taboo thing, especially in the South, to uh, be able to read minds or cards or, you know, any kind of witchcraft kind of thing, you know, and you, you get talked down to, you get put, um, you put, get put in a class of people, you know, because you have certain abilities, but God wouldn't make you who you are and, and condemn you for it. The universe wouldn't make you who you are and condemn you for it. You know, the universe is an artist and they make each one of us like individually and very unique and special. And that is so cool. So, that is correct. God created man and in his image. Absolutely. Welcome back, Crazy Witch. I really like the show. Absolutely. Uh, and Crazy Witch was in the last show. Very entertaining. Uh, so, yes, very. Uh, uh, absolutely. So, Crazy Witch knows a little bit of uh, backstory there. Yeah. Okay. FDL Paranormal, welcome back in the day. Uh, people will be burned at the state, whether it be witchcraft or mediumship. And you're right, FDL yeah. Paranormal. I just uh, had to tell you that I was burned at the stake or I yep. was condemned for it. And I knew like one of my past lives, you can ask anybody that I talk to, I tell them one of my past lives, I was burned at the stake as a witch. And I knew it. And <laughs> like, like I, I, I just know I was. I, and I want to everybody to know I talked crap to the bitter end. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't repent. <laughs> and I actually believe that. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. So I actually believe that. I really do. I can actually see you doing that as well. So <laughs> oh, I kind of, yeah. I kind of know Sonya just a little bit more than just from the show. I'll leave yeah. it at that. But what, yeah. what growing up with these abilities, how was it trying to fit in? Because you know, I went on a mission and I'm writing a book, right? And I went through all these people with abilities like you, and everybody has these different stories. What is your story growing up? You know, going into your early teen years, your early adult years. Well, you know, like I was talking, like you asked me, like my early years, like being a child, once I heard that voice, I know this sounds crazy, but I I, I learned to read and write before I was in school. Um, I oh, learned all these wow. things. I, made, I, I um. I things gave me answers and I don't know how I knew the things that I knew, but I knew them. And in kindergarten, we took like an aptitude test and we took our key, our TCAP test. And I made higher than anybody in my kindergarten and anybody in the state of East Tennessee or the state of Tennessee. I made the highest grade in the whole state. I had a man deliver an award to me like my uh, kindergarten graduation, which I didn't attend, but they delivered it there. But then I wasn't there. So they actually had the man come to my house and deliver it to person. And I, oh, my God, it freaked me out. I thought I was in trouble because he was like in a uniform. And he was <laughs> the and I, I was in kindergarten. But, yeah, I made I've still got that thing. And so I was really like proud of that. But I made the highest grade in the whole state. And I was like, yeah. But my whole, like, growing up through the teen years, I would know things and not know how I knew them. So it made school really boring because I didn't really, <laughs> like, I didn't really have to do much of the work. And uh, in my teen years, it made it really uh, difficult to, like, I never fit in. I mean, I fit in with everybody, but I never fit in. I, I like, I've got, like, very, you know, some close friends. It's just, I, I like, I got better friends now, like, with the community that I'm in now, but, like, in school, I just, they wanted to, they wanted to play save the princess. And I wanted to know why we needed to save the princess. So why did the princess need saving? You know, did she do something? Right. And I was that right. kid who wanted to know why. And they just wanted to play. And I just, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But, but like, now, go ahead. No, go ahead. 
<laughs> now, now, with your abilities, now can you touch somebody and see things, or are you can you just be in a room with somebody? I can just be in a room with people. And what? Well, okay, so I know, and I they told me like they were talking about. I was talking about me. Uh, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, and I draw. I, I have a real hard time with wanting to be a stand-up comedian because I'd be excellent at it. I'm I'm really funny, and I, I I will toot my own horn when it comes to that. But like. I can see stuff in people like I can roast a person and they are, they don't even know how I know that stuff about them, but I can see that stuff that people like, you know, they keep on it. They keep, you know, in a closet of their mind or whatever, and they don't tell people about, it, but I can make jokes about stuff, you know, uh, I right, bet you're like, this, right. blah, 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 you know, and they'll be like, how, you know, give me a look. I'll be like, see his face. Yeah. I told you guys. And they're, everybody's like, and they'll be like, how did you know that? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so i know that's awful and, and you, i don't know like i don't guess you should do that to people but i i think people should o be open and honest about who they are and things they think about and you should vent and it's okay to talk about stuff people are just it's hard to get out of those taboo things that you know people think are taboo you know you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to talk about that i mean well you know what we actually had a very successful uh, attorney on my show uh, he is called the psychic lawyer, and he used his power to pick jury members for his trial. So why not? Well, well, even before, like I wanted to be a stand up uh, comedian because I guess that's what I chose after uh, my real dream was I wanted to be an like a medical examiner, an anthropologist or a detective because I would have been. I can watch those like ID shows, you know, all those snap shows. I can watch them. I can watch the first five minutes and get the first five minutes and tell you exactly who it was. Like, I just need to see the information. I can hear that. Like, um, there, there's a lot of stuff I, I, I know that's happened. You know, there's a lot of like, uh, a lot of people get found, you know, in awful situations around here and people don't know what happened to them. And I know what happened to them. And how am I supposed to tell people that and convince them there's no evidence and I can't prove it. But I could tell you that's exactly what happened. And I've never been wrong. I've, uh, that's the thing about it. I've never been wrong. I'm not always right, wow. but I've never been wrong about that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, she actually had the opportunity last show Last show she was on just a few minutes ago, was speaking with Angela Ford, the one that worked for the United States government, the Defense Intelligence Agency. Yes, that one that spied on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. And uh, she actually had an interesting conversation. And Angela Ford would tell you that not everything is always correct and will not always be 100 percent accurate. But there will be an accuracy that will be set for you, a bar. Well, sometimes you have to ask the wrong questions to get to the right question. And I know that sounds weird, but it's somebody will get a question wrong and you'll and they'll answer that question. You know, oh, no, it wasn't like this, you know, and you get a, a different piece of the information and it, it changes on you. And I can understand that. Like, if that made sense. <laughs> yes, it does. It really does. And, you know, a lot of people do that with dowsing. You know, a lot of people ask certain questions in dowsing, you know, and, and, and with their techniques to get certain answers. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, Grizzly, uh, how are you? I'm, I'm very fine, uh, Agent Smith. Uh, happy Monday Easter to you, too. Uh, weird thing was I was going the next day. So FDO Paranormal, when I was 17, and one was coming to me and said, don't go to the dentist. It's not your time to go there. Something's wrong with the injection. Don't go until after March. Warning, the eyes of March. And the weird thing was, I was going the next day. Wow, very interesting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it. I, I hear the same thing. And, you know, and I was told, Sonia, I was going to write a book. And I was like, whatever, get out of here. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm writing a book, right? And it's on psychics, right? And it's like, I never dreamed of this. And everybody that I talk to, I don't ask for readings. They just like, grizzly. It's because you know? if you get those feelings about something that you, okay, I have a hard time with this. If something comes to me and has me like, you sh you need to tell that person that, I have to tell that person. Like, people think that I, something, sometimes I should shut my mouth, and I can't because 
if something is telling me to tell that person that I feel like they need to know it. Cause I already have like things I wouldn't tell anybody anything out of the way, but like, I don't allow like evil things with me. So I know like the direct, like I know whatever's telling me to tell that person that is real. Like I know that spirit that whatever that message is from whoever it is, that person needs to be told. And when I do it all the time and, and I'll, I mean, I've done it to people I barely know. And, um, um, it's been like that. Like I, I, like one of my really, really good friends, Alicia, me and her met because her mother came to me as a spirit and asked me to help her. And I, I only met the girl one time and she'd asked me for a ride. And I was like, wow. I, can't ride. I can't like, I don't know you. I don't know about giving you a ride. And the spirit just kept asking me. And I didn't know the spirit was her mother at the time, but it was. And, um, the spirit was just like, please give her a ride. She's going to need your help. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, I don't know. And I looked up where she needed to go and it was like 10 minutes to where I needed to be that morning. And I was like, all right, well, she needs a ride to work. I'll give anybody a ride to work. Um, I respect anybody who has a job like that. Um, so, so I was still kind of doubtful about having to rush, you know, cause I'd had to leave right then. I needed to get up in the next right, 10 minutes to leave, right. and I didn't want to rush. And about the time I said that my dad, my dad had been just dead. Just, um, just a few months, I think. Yeah. And he, and that was the first time he had ever appeared and not as just a voice and not just as a, like, I could hear him walking through the house a lot. And I, you know, I could hear his like, I could hear him, but never see him. And that was the first time he appeared to me in like person. And, uh, since he had died and I was like, ah, uh, he was like, you need to, you need to take, you need to take this lady's, whatever this lady wants you to do, you need to do that for this lady. And I said, okay, dad. And I got right up and I went right out the door. And, um, like after that, a lot of stuff happened in her life and she really didn't like need me, you know, like we needed each other's friends and we've been friends ever since. And I told her like I, on the way there and I was like, uh, listen, I, the only reason why I gave you a ride is because this spirit and I described the spirit to her and she just looked at me funny. And I was like, I know you don't know me and I know it sounds weird. And I was like, but I described the spirit to her and she was like, and I didn't know it was her mother and I didn't know her mother was dead, but she showed me this picture and she goes, was this her or was this the spirit? And I was like, yeah, I was like, cause she, it wasn't just a spirit. It was a, it was an apparition or whatever you want to call it. Um, right. Right. Yeah. And she showed me the picture and I was like, yeah, that's her. And she goes, yeah, that's my mother. She's been dead. And her, oh. her, her lucky number is seven and my dad died on March 13th and her mom died on March 20th, different years, but, um, but just seven days apart. And when we figured, when I told her that, you know, I said, yeah, my dad died March 13th. And she said, well, my mom died March 20th. And she said, it's really weird because my lucky number is seven and, and there's seven days in between their deaths. And yeah. And I was like, yeah, th I was like, the spirit, I was like, your mom's spirit asked me to do that. And I said, I denied it and denied it. And then I said, my dad appeared and was like, Hey, you need to do this. And I was like, yes, sir. And we always joke about like our, our dead parents putting us together as a play date, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I kind of know that feeling in a way. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I do. Uh, I kind of wonder sometimes why uh, you reached out, but uh, Agent Smith says uh, seven people in here. Uh, actually, we got more than that. Uh, that counter is not accurate, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all the platforms I'm on and in uh, Facebook groups. Uh, Denise, hello, welcome, welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. So now I I know where you're coming from, and and I I understand that, and and it's very difficult, right? It really is. Yeah. And walking through. And going through life like that with abilities like yours, with people that don't understand, does make it hard. And hello, Brenda. Hello, everyone. And it's people don't understand that. <laughs> and like you said, I mean, you go back and look at the raw footage of the asylum salems or the, uh, the asylums. The people in there that well, were can, heavily medicated that's, and that's the thing about like i told like i think i told you this before is because we talk a lot and i forget you know i was like did i say that on the show or did were we just talking <laughs> no. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no like i like even the tv i still can hear that stuff and see those auras through the tv i can see them in pictures i can i can i can i can get them 
if we talk about a certain matter, I can start to pick up visions from that. Just us talking about it. The person can be alive or dead, you know, and I can talk about that person and I can see them. You can tell me a story about something that you were doing when you were little and I can see it. I can see it the way you're seeing it in your head and I can describe it to a T and, and it's just, I have to be in that connection. And a lot of time with that, I have to be like face to face with you. I, like, um, it's hard to like, it's, it's really like boggled over a messenger or like a phone or something like that. But if we're like, if we're connected and looking at each other, I can see it. It's, it's, it's pretty wild and it makes it lonely, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> Well, and, you know, and, and I think uh, you have been told uh, last show things are changing for you. And I, I think you have been also advised that you're not going to be alone and things are going to get better. So, but they gave me a two year like a two year thing. And that made me because I get real anxious. Um, I have really bad anxiety and I, I it's all it all stems from different things, you know, and I, I mm -hmm. try to work through that, but like, um, rushing to get things done gives me really bad anxiety, but I procrastinate. So I always have to like do stuff, but like in the next few years, like there's a lot of changes I gotta, I've got to make. Um, my house has fallen apart. I'm going to have to move out of this house and burn it to the ground or something. Like I'm going to have to do it. And I know that's going to have to happen. So, and then there's like, um, just, um, um, getting back to work and getting um, to back into the burn community, which is something that I really enjoy and something that I love. So them asking me to come and be a part of the leads this year and be a lead at the at the event is, you know, I've done it before to other burns, but it's been I've been it's been four or five years since my dad like since my dad died. I went to one burn, which was I needed, and I haven't been back to a burn since. So I really needed it. I needed those people in my life. So ever since I met you and all this stuff is just, it's just been, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I, I don't know if like, had I healed quicker, would I be in the same place? No. So I had to go through all that torment to humble me. And it really has humbled me. And it's taught me a lot of patience. It's taught me a lot of things to be grateful for that I was ungrateful for before because I was hurt, you know? So it's taught me like all these things, all this shadow work that I've done for myself. And now I realize that I can help people do shadow work for themselves. And that is really important. Like as far as healing goes, when you, when you're traumatized by something, sometimes you don't even realize you're traumatized or sometimes you don't even realize that you, that's, that's what that is. You know, like we can put labels on everything, but people don't have any ways to tell people that they're hurt. We're not a tribe of people anymore. Like we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be a tribe of people who get together at night and talk by fire, like, or whatever, like, and, but we don't do that. You don't talk to your fellow guys at church, church, you go to church and somebody's just preaching at you. And you know, you say good hellos and goodbyes before and after church and occasionally church things go on, but it's not the same. That's not what a tribe of people do. We should all know each other's hurts and we should all be here to help each other heal. And that's what I'm here for. And I know that. And yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and that's one thing that America families are lacking. And that's what's wrong with society today. <laughs> and I totally agree with Sonny on that. I don't know about you listeners out there in La La Land across the country and around the world, but she's speaking the truth. We did. We, we've lost that. We've lost that sentimental part of us. That is not we are, when one of us hurts, we all hurt. Um, there's like, a, I think there's a tribe in Africa, like it, like a, it was like a just thing I read on Facebook or something. And it was like a tribe in Africa. He was talking about them. They offered one of the, the, the kids candy. And he said, well, no, I can't take the candy. There's not enough candy for everybody. And they was like, but you still wouldn't take the candy. He said, no, because if one of us suffers, we're, we all suffer. So if one of us is happy, then we're all happy. But you know, it was just. It's kind of like that thing. You're just supposed to be there for your people, and we're not there for each other like we're supposed to be. We don't FDL, talk about them. Yeah, FDL Paranormal, I stand corrected. I meant not just in America. I meant the world, absolutely. The world as a whole, because that's where we broadcast, coast to coast and around the world. That is correct. I don't forget about my across-the-pond fellows and brothers and sisters. No, I do not. 
But no, but she's right. And that's what's wrong with today's society. And we don't want to face it. We are so stuck in social media, TV, being brainwashed. Now you got Grizzly rolling and going on another subject. Let's go back to Sonia action. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could, I could talk. If you want to talk about the world's problems, we could do that one day too, because I like, I've, I know I called, I like for years, I called myself a conspiracy theorist because that's what everybody else called me. And I was like, wait a minute. I can't be a conspiracy theorist when all of it's coming true. That can't, mm -hmm, mm, can't be, a, can't, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Right, like a lot right. of stuff in the world's happening and it's like, you know, you got to be careful of manifestation, but a lot of things, I don't give visions for no reason. So I wouldn't warn myself for no reason about things that are happening and things that are going on in the world. So. So how does that work when you are getting these visions and something tells you, oh, no, stop? I mean, what do you do? Do you actually listen to it? Most of the time I do, because if I don't, I've ended up in some really stupid situations like like and and been angry for years about it because I knew better. And why? Like, I always know better. Like, there's no reason for me not to know. So if I make a stupid decision, I knew better in the first place. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Denise, like, so you're I right. To, I, I have to listen to that voice because it's kept me since, uh, like, all the stuff that, like, um, um, like, since my dad died and all that happened, and I got connected back with the universe. If I don't listen to, if I doubt myself, that's that doubt in myself. If I don't listen to that voice, that means I'm doubting myself and what, a, and how, you know, in the gifts that I'm been given or like whatever they're saying to me. If I don't listen to it, then. I feel like that's doubt in myself and doubt in the universe. You know, why would it warn me if it didn't want me to not do what I'm supposed to be doing? That makes Denise, sense. you're <laughs> right. That makes sense. I don't, like, no, it does um, make sense, Sonia. We just talked about this, Denise, in the last show. People have too much ego. Let it go. Mm -hmm. And be in service to others. That's what we just talked about, ladies and gentlemen. People's egos get in the way. Yeah, we are not crazy. We 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 lit a lot of stuff like to be humbled though. Like that that's what it was doing. Like this whole time, I I needed to like I was hurt. I was angry. I was mad. My dad died. I was mad. The world made me mad. Everybody, everybody needed to like hurt with me, you know. And that's the way I felt about it for a while. Like and and it 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 took a lot of and it wasn't everybody. Yeah, I guess it was everybody. Um, because if I wasn't myself and I wasn't doing the things that I needed to be doing by healing other people or helping other people heal, then I wasn't doing the things I needed to be doing. So I was, you know, trapping myself in an ever like everlasting loop of, um, <clears throat> just not learning my lesson that I was supposed to learn. And I did that for a few years and that, that just. The powers to be will make you humble and fall upon thy knees. To thy awaken to see the light before you. And once you see <laughs> that light, you should be able to walk. Does I that just make sense? cut the light out. That was my problem. Like I when I was 25, I I was open. I knew where I was supposed to be. I knew where I was supposed to go. I knew I knew my dad dying would destroy me for a while. I knew that. I saw it come in and for years it it uh it was hard for me to live because I saw it coming. Like as soon as my dad told me he was sick, I saw everything up to the day that he died. I saw the day he died, I knew what day he was going to die. I knew like I knew that he wasn't going to make it through. It didn't matter what we did. I knew from that moment he told me he was sick. So for seven years, I had to like fight back these feelings. Like I got to do all this stuff, whatever my dad needed done. I needed to get it done before he died so he could die in peace. And that's, you know, and, and it didn't matter. Like my dad had so much to do. Like he never, like, you know, I would have never got it all done anyway. So I'd already set myself up for failure. And um, never, never. Agent Smith says, sorry for your loss. My condolences to your guests, Grizzly. Thank Denise, you. when you help others, you take out of yourself. Norma says you look like 25, but no, she's 18, man. <laughs> she's 18 yeah. and she's got the energy of an 18-year-old. Norma? Oh, yeah, I'm 36. Thank you. So, wow, yes. <laughs> I'm um, telling you. 
I had to go through all of that to be able to in tune. Okay, so like, I, I, I okay, reading cards is a thing, like, you know, reading people's minds, reading people's palms, I do pendulum work, things like that. But like, I think as far as finding what I'm best at was the, the shadow work, the hard things that people deal with. Like, that's my best thing because I can, I can really talk to people and in a way that they don't, everybody needs to hear criticisms about themselves. And if they, a lot of people can't handle that and people need to know. No, they you cannot. Know? And why and that's is part that? Of your shadow work is like you're, the things that are, are holding you back are your fault. A ninety percent of the time, you're being held back by you, and well, actually, probably ninety nine percent of the time, you're being held back by you. Well, and, it depends on who you ask. You know, it's always somebody yeah. else's fault, right? It's it's oh, because so, of I, them. No, I, I would try to short. like give it it's more because of her. I didn't get the pay raise. It's because <laughs> of her. I didn't get the promotion. Yeah, and that that's a big problem that we have. Uh, you know, like, and sometimes it isn't stuff that you did. Sometimes it's just a decision that gets made that it just didn't. It wasn't the path for you, but you're so busy sulking on not getting that, that you'll miss half the opportunities that you have. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's something I had to learn. Like I, I've been learning all these, like these small steps to be able to, to and do I'm what gonna, I do. And I'm going to make you big right here, right now. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you this. If you didn't do what you did that day, I think the opportunity would have been missed. I know because whatever is meant for you is going to meant like be like it's going to come to you whether you want it or not. You can't uh, deny, like I don't know why 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 do you say that though why why would it been I want to know because it would have took me another four or five months to get back to you. No, but that's a different. Okay, so I had been keeping in touch, like, <laughs> every, okay, it, except for, like, when that, that thing that happened in the group chat, and you left the group chat, I thought you were mad at everybody, and I was like, oh, do I, like, because I had messaged no, you a hundred no. times, and just, like, and just kept deleting it, and I was like, oh, I to message you, and then I delete it, and I do that all the time to people, and, uh, so, you no, know, I would have, I would have kept, like, you can't. I knew when we met, we weren't like, there's no way. You can't get rid of me now. Uh. No, no. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we will explain this at the end of the show. This this show, uh, last show, took a twist. This show is basically, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to go for a ride. When I say a ride, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to sit back and you're going to have fun. And you're not know what's going to hit you. So, just hold on. We're going to get you there in a second. But... With these abilities and everything, you know, is you know, growing up like that. I mean, I just, I mean, your friends. I mean, your friends. Where are your friends? Are they your friends? Where are they your friends? I mean, you can tell they're not telling you the truth. I don't know they're being honest or not being honest. I think that hurts, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. And, you know, I have a really bad, like, when somebody's trying to, like, um, talk to me and falsify the things that they say I have a really and you can tell when I'm doing it and I you just I don't know why people would lie to me they know that I know that they're lying to me like even my friends like I've had them try to lie to me and I'm like you know I'm psychic right like you know that I know you're lying but I'll try to interrupt them like I'll interrupt them and I'll give them a whole nother chance to come clean and I'll just I interrupt always, them. I always go up yeah I always yeah. go up I'll over talk yeah. you. I'll find a way. And, and, and I'm trying to give you that chance to just that that just to be responsible. Like, you know, we're responsible for our own actions and our own emotions and the way we act. We're responsible for that. So like, and if you've done something wrong, just be like, you're right. I, I've been caught. That's fine. Cause if I'm asking you about it, I obviously know that you did it. <laughs> like, Ladies and gentlemen, Okay, the ones that do know me, yes, I was in law enforcement. The ones that just watched the last show, I'm not going to say it, no, about me now. It's out of the closet, some of it. No, I'm not gay. So don't even go that route. Don't even start that conversation in the thread and all this laughter. <laughs> yeah. But I do have some things that I can do. Brenda's already laughing. And, and great, crazy witches, please tell me that it's Grateful Dead. Uh, tra uh, yeah, tapestry behind. Okay, Sonny, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big deadhead. Laugh out loud. LOL. 
But anyway, witches and friends, crazy witch. <laughs> I get called that a lot. I'm a witch. Yeah, I got my broom. Hold on. See my broom. On my oh phone. my lord! What did I get myself into, ladies and gentlemen? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, I for, what, what was I saying? I actually forgot. I had no <sighs> idea what I was saying. I don't rock know. on, crazy witch. Yeah, rock on. Uh, Agent Smith, uh, action. Where was I at? Sonia says I was saying something. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, but no, but you know, but people, and and I would tell my friends this today. Do not lie to me. I know when you are telling me the truth, and I will tell you, and I will tell you over and over. When you talk to me, look at me in my eyes. Because I can see right through you. And you still, you still want to lie each and every time. And it kills I just, me. I, like when I know somebody's lying, I'll just tell them straight out what they're thinking about and the truth anyway. Like they'll, they'll go to like make an excuse and I'll say it before they do. That's when I told you I was interrupting people. That's what I'll do. I'll interrupt them with whatever thing that they were going to say. And it create it like. It freaks people out. There's some people that will start to argue with me and they realize what they're doing. And we just look at each other. And I said, yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, <laughs> I got you. And so, yeah, that, that's funny. That's funny. I mean, why? So, you know what? We're, we're human beings, right? So, no, you don't have to worry. I'll never go there. Well, all right, Agent Smith, <laughs> lock me up. I'm guilty. Yes, I'm guilty. Or guilty as charged. We are human beings. You know, we make mistakes. But if I'm going to look at her and tell her a blatant lie, are you crazy? If she <laughs> asks me a question, I'm going to tell her the truth. Nothing but the truth will help me. Yes, absolutely I am. I do that with anybody. Now, if you ask me a question, you may not like the answer. That's not my fault. I may try to sugarcoat it. Don't ask a psychic a question, because let me tell you something, Agent Smith, Brenda, Crazy Witch, everybody, PDL, everybody out there in Law Law Land. I do not ask a question if I don't know the answer to. Just remember that. I mean, if it's about something like that, yeah, like, because... I have to ask questions over and over again. I'm like, was this like, where's those, where's the silverware in this house again? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can like really, I can, I can, I can see all kinds of stuff, but I, 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 I won't know where your silverware is in your house. I'll look like I'm going through your drawers every time. <laughs> that, that is funny. And Denise says, I know when people are lying, I just give them enough rope to hang themselves. Sometimes Denise, it, it's just so bad, you know, when they, when it's your loved ones your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you just, you just stop them. You know, you're, 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 you're over it. You just tell them, stop. Don't because, even go there. Yeah, because it's, it's that, that, that blatant disrespect of like, yeah, it's just the fact that it wasn't that you lied to me is the fact that you thought I'd believe it. And you continue to lie yeah. to cover it up. That's, that's yeah. the killer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the people that don't know me, that actually get, emails for me i have a quote on my email it's a personal email quote from abraham lincoln and i'm a big abe guy right and on that abe link or the quote of abe lincoln it says i'm success today because somebody or what now see you got me all excited and i'm blaming me you see you take your own responsibility I'm success today because I did not have the heart to have. So I can't even remember it now. I'm, I'm a anyway. Somebody had the heart to believe me, so I didn't have the heart to let them down. But that's my quote because Abe Lincoln was called Honest Abe because he would tell you, I could not remember. My memory was that bad. I couldn't tell a lie to keep telling that lie. So it's it's the best to be honest. That we don't have to remember what lie you told. Yeah, like I can barely like. I have like, a, I can barely remember what I was doing a minute ago, like a little long remember something I lied to somebody about that I had to keep lying about. Like, <laughs> like, ah, no. Do you regret picking up that phone and sitting on that ET? No. I don't, I don't regret anything I do yeah, normally. Yeah. Um, I have like, 
like um that's why like anytime I have like that feeling to say something I always say what's on my mind because I've never regretted saying anything I mean there's nothing I've ever said to anybody that I couldn't sit down with them and talk through but I have regretted not saying a lot of stuff to people and that is the truth ladies and gentlemen and that brings us to a certain point loved ones you do not want to come to Sonia to tell somebody on the other side what you want to say when you have a chance to say it today. Don't take life granted for granted. Life is short. I had a second chance on life. People that don't know, I was supposed to die not once, but I was supposed to be assassinated. Did you know that, Sonia? Yeah. You've told me several times. Yeah. I say I can't remember because I'm still shook it up about it because I hope you're <laughs> no. watching right now. I hope you're watching me because I know who you are. Yeah, I was going to be set up one night while I was working on the PD. Ladies and gentlemen, three shots. But maybe, maybe, looking at it wrong. maybe you were supposed to have all of that happen and it didn't happen because you had those thoughts. So you prevented it yourself. And let me tell you something. I will walk three times as far as to get to where I'm now with here with you to do it all over again. Three times. Remember that song? I will walk 500 miles and I will walk 500 more. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. Yeah, Agent Smith, uh, you were there that day. Really messed me up when I got that call and got that reading. But that's okay. He was a friend. He was a friend. Oh, well, like that's, that's the thing. Like that's why you said you were supposed to be killed. No, you were just supposed to be warned, and you were. So nobody could harm you. So you've been protected for a long time. Well, I feel protected now. Well, you are protected, and you've got a good circle of people around you that wouldn't let anything happen to you. And I of feel course, that way. The closer you are to people, the more stuff that can blindside you, though. You know, you, it, it, sometimes um, being really close to people, you just don't see stuff coming. And sometimes no, you do. You, and you really don't. You really pretend don't. You didn't, and, and, uh. Well, and I'll be honest with you, too, though, is I didn't realize what my mom had. And I didn't realize what I had because I just thought it was just like, you know, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I just thought it was, you know, instinct. Right. I thought it was training. Well, some of it is instinct because we're we're supposed to be like that. We're and it's been we've been dumbed down basically. Our brains don't work like they they used to. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of chemicals we've been putting in ourselves for years, and we're dumbing ourselves down, and we're not we're not the the we're not healthy, you know, like we we should be. It's really you know we wear shoes, not wearing shoes, um, wearing shoes. And not having your feet planted on the earth has a lot to do with uh, you you uh, missing out on a lot of stuff. I mean, energy, uh, knowledge. I mean, um, yeah, we're loaded with metals. That's true. We, we all need a good detox. And we're also loaded with parasites. We should detox our bodies. We should fast. We shouldn't be eating all this stuff. Um, the water we drink doesn't even hydrate us. It just keeps us from withering away. Uh, what do you think about that snow challenge everybody's been doing when it, this past winter? Taking the snowball with the lighter and it's not melting. It, it, it just uh, fizzles and it smells like nylon. Have you well, seen that? Like, okay. I've, I remember I've spent so much time outside. Chemtrails. You can tell me chemtrails aren't real. But we didn't have chemtrails when I was younger. I didn't. I, I remember, like, I remember I the, way the, country. the clouds looked. The clouds don't even look the same as they used to. The clouds, like, you can, I mean, when storms roll in, yeah, maybe. But we used to get these just big, like, big clouds. So now, a lot of the time, it's either just blue sky or it's chemtrail sky with the X's. You can tell because they're always in X's and they always turn into that stream of clouds. And then, um, or you get a storm. 
you barely ever just get those big billowing clouds anymore that just rolled through, you know, like I did when we were younger, you know, when you would lay in the grass on a sunny day and you would look at the clouds and you'd be like, oh, that looks like a bunny rabbit. And that looks like a whatever. Yeah, they don't look like that anymore. So no, whatever's in the chemtrails and whatever's in the sky, whatever's mixing with the water, it's all, I mean, you know, population control. <laughs> Boy, did we get sidetracked, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, where did we go wrong? Dang, like no, Brent is the darn government. Yeah. So, well, we we're never know connected. we're going to go with Grizzly on the hunt with Sonia. Boy. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, have you ever visited a haunted place? Have you ever wanted to go to a haunted place? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, I don't try to disturb places people think that they think are haunted you know what i mean because a lot of it's just legend or whatever but i've been in um i've been in a lot of people's houses and i'll see things and i'll go to them and i'll be like is your house haunted because i saw blah 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 and they'll be like i'll be like yeah yeah you've seen it too and i was like yeah and i like so people's houses have a lot of spirits in them um anytime almost anytime you think about a person though spirits show up I mean, you could be talking about anybody that you know that's passed on and spirit will show up. You know, it's just a lot of the way. Not every time, but most of the time. That's but it's wild. like it's the same as something haunting. Um, I think a lot of the things get haunted by spirits that don't know that they're passed on or maybe they're like stuck somehow. I'm not sure how that works. I'm still, you know, still in on it. But my house is my house is haunted. It's been haunted since. Well, since I moved in when I was 13 days old, like, <laughs> uh, uh, but like a lot of people say like the haunting time is like the witching hours, like 3 a.m. I find that spirits haunt right before dawn more than any other time. 5 a.m. Let's say 5 a.m. 5 a.m. is like I hear music playing in my house. Uh, no I, way. Like, yeah, there's like it's like one of those old timey. Um, Record players with the uh, yeah the, the RCA the record players <laughs> with the yeah, yeah yeah um it's music like that so I hear that it's like that 1920 swing music sort of so wow. right um man like uh, I, I even have one of my dogs uh, one of our old dogs that died we had her for like 15 years I still hear her walking through the house but I'm a big believer in um. Because time is not forward and backwards. Time is, you know, time is everywhere. Time time really doesn't exist here on Earth. But like, you know, what we consider and what we consider time. Anything that's been in that area or in that spot or will be in that spot has left a visual or like left residual pieces of it. So you pick up a lot of stuff that used to be there, was there, you know, it's like time jumping. You kind of just hear stuff that was there. So it's different. So is that why they call it like a record player, the residual hauntings or residual sightings or? So, uh, yeah, because that that's something, especially when it reoccurs and reoccurs and reoccurs and it's always the same thing. That's kind of just like um, that part of the time loop just sitting there playing and it just plays, you know, when it can. So there, there is that. And then there is there's spirits that come and go, you know, they're, they're, they're different and there is that. So, yeah. I never thought about the residual haunting thing and the way they say that. Yeah. So I guess that is that's why. That's pretty interesting. So when like uh, Norma says you're spot on tracker, the USFS geologist has been testing mountain stream water. It tests high magnesium and aluminum, barium and other chemicals not naturally occurring. I wonder why. They want to keep your penile gland from being able to move into this new shift with the rest of us. We're all guilty. I'm over here drinking a Mountain Dew and smoking a cigarette, and I'm guilty of it too. But they want to keep our penile gland covered so we cannot, so we cannot um, move into this next shift that we need to be in. That's what they're. I mean, and and I've had those, and it's so wild. All these theories and stuff, and all these things I've felt for all these years. Because I, I, I guess it's kind of made me a hermit. You know, I'm a survivalist. I've been spending my time in the woods trying to. Just, I guess, not be a part of it. And I can't 
not not be a part of it that's not who i am you know that's right right <laughs> darn government yeah darn government like um but like i've like i know these things that, that you know that that they're, they're that they've been doing to us and now you're finding out other people like it's I think technology has gotten really good because we can all discuss these things that we are feeling as people together. That's one reason they want to shut down TikTok. They don't want, they don't want people, they, they don't want people to be able to discuss things like this out in the open because we are a like-minded shared hive people. When one of us knows something, they did test. Um, they did this like a uh, puzzle test. They put these two people and they were on opposite sides of the world. They gave one people the test and they gave the other people the test. Nobody could figure it out, out the answer. But then they went in and gave the one group over here the answer to the test. And as soon as they gave that other group the answer to the test, the other group knew it immediately. Just like that. That's how, because they were working on the same test. So they were connected to this one thing and they were all had the like-minded thought process to this one thing. And because even if they were on the other side of the world and they didn't know each other and they didn't know somebody else was taking the test, they heard the answer in their head. So mm -hmm. if Angela Ford was here, the psychic that worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency during the Cold War, she would tell you, Sonia, she would have to pick a target that somebody would have to put in an envelope seal it, put in an env another envelope, seal it, sign the envelope, put it underneath a keyboard, and she would have to remote view into the envelope in another building, wherever, and see what that is and find that target across the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, um, it's like that, like, they, they made that movie, The Minute Stare at Goats, you know, and as funny as that movie is, that stuff was completely true. All of that stuff that they did. That I mean, I mean, do you know? Okay, so I'm part of the Burning Man community. We're burners. We we believe in um being able to express yourself. Uh, you know, decommodification. You know, um, anything that's name brand. You know, get rid of that. Um, but a lot of people use um, a lot of psychedelics and hallucinogenics, you know, out there. And, and, and that's true. Not everybody. And, you know, it's mostly for, we go for the art, not for that. But a lot of people like um, use psychedelics and hallucinogenics. And I was talking to somebody who what his job is. He worked for the government. They went back into all the. Um, like. All the things that are supposed to happen, they would go back and reread them to make sure that they gave the public the right information. Like, that's what his job was. He would go over all this study and all this stuff that they were telling the public and make sure that it was right, that it that it lined up and synchronized with what they were told, because it never does. And that's why they have a guy who does, you know, that makes them aware of it, which I think is weird. You know, they got to make right. they hired a man to keep up with their lies, basically. Right. So I asked him, I said, well, is the government watching the burn community? And and he was like, well, yeah, of course they are. And we already knew, you know, I just wanted to hear what he said. And somebody said, why? Because of drugs. And he goes, no, he goes, no, they don't. They don't care about that. He goes, they are so scared that you people will become so enlightened that you will you will group together and um, shut them down. And when he said that, I already knew what he was going to say. Like, I already knew. And everybody was just like, yeah. So they are afraid of you reaching a certain level of enlightenment. And they, they want to keep you dumbed down because they, they can't control you. If they can't control you when, when you can speak together with somebody across the world or across the field through your mind, when you are so connected that you can heal your own body. Your body heals itself. You just need to know how to tell it to do so or to allow it to heal itself. You know, our so body. You, is worth so life. you are you are in agreement with Grizzly. That they do have a cure for cancer. You agree with Grizzly that that Tesla did invent wireless electricity. Tesla electricity? was a genius. I'm going to tell you something. I The three, six, nine thing that he has, which or three of my, like, um, my path number is three, the six, the nine, um, like, he has, 
I can't even get into that. We'll get so off track. Yes, he was a genius. He was right. Uh, there, uh, That free energy that he picked up is the energy that we all share. It is all connected. That movie Avatar is exactly what it should be like. We should be just like those Avatar creatures. You know, I'm not saying we're going to stick our ponytails into another ponytail and be like, one, <laughs> whatever, but like, right, we right. are connected. That, that energy, Awa, I mean, it's real. It's real here. And and, and cancer, yeah, she's talking about cancer being caused by cancer. If you are told that you have cancer and believe that you have cancer, I'm going to tell you something. Cancer will grow in your body. If you're around negative people and negative things, negative vibes, things that hold you down, you again, you can get cancer and the cancer will grow inside you. You just, I mean, that's part of it. If a doctor tells you you're going to die, you're going to believe it and then you'll die because your body will believe it. It's crazy what the mind will do if you believe it. You yeah. know, you're absolutely right because they taught us in law enforcement to never, ever give up. No matter how bad we are injured, to keep <laughs> fighting for our life. Because there has been officers, Sonia, that had very small superficial wounds that were not life-threatening, but they thought they were going to die, and they did. Because they thought they were going to, and right. they did. That's another thing, uh, and uh, that's another thing that draws me back to being a healer in all types and things. Sometimes people just need to be told that like whatever's in them, they need to be told. Some people just need to be told they need to be happier, how to be happier, how to like pick these things apart or, you know, feel, feel, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, your mind is a, a such a powerful thing. And if you have more people that are like-minded and well, like uh, we have no need for government. If we, we're living the way we we're supposed to be living. If we would, we would not, we wouldn't have to govern each other. We would already be governed because we'd be watching each other's backs constantly. And, and that's just the way it would be. Cause we would already know our, that sixth sense or whatever you want to call it. We all like, we all, I don't know. We all, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm getting, I all, know one thing what we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to get censored, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to get zapped by the United States government and get <laughs> ready to get kicked off the air, Norma. So if something happens to Grizzly out here in Northern Kentucky, I love everybody. Yeah, so. <laughs> tell them right where you are, dude. They already know. They know. Yeah, they, they got my DNA. They got my fingerprints. They know who I am. Uh, Norma, they have made a uh, spear death, and uh, once you know uh, you're immortal, it will, it will free you. That's true. Uh, She's so tracker. right. Avatar right. is my dream. Go to a planet with four moons, heal, turn into a ten, ten tall blue dude with a tail that rides dragons every time I see a UFO, and I'm like, <laughs> mm, come back, you forgot me. And Norma, uh, Grizz, you're over the target. Yeah, I'm always over the target. And Brenda, yeah, we all have it. Uh, TMT in Florida, you are right, Sonia. Crazy witch, I know what you're trying to say. It's hard to express the unexplainable. Now, speaking of the unexplainable, ladies and gentlemen, not only is she a psychic, not only is she a healer, but she also has cryptids <laughs> around her property in Tennessee. I'm not joking. And I've saw, I've seen like I've seen most people when they see cryptids, you know, like a couple people might see a couple things or that thought they might see a couple things. But I've seen again, I have a family of Bigfoots that live out here. They live out here full time. Um, uh, oh, wait a minute, Wayne. What do you mean a family? I mean, how many are we talking? Well, it's a family. There's I mean, I wouldn't. I'm afraid to tell people how many there are, like how many I know there are, like how many I've seen, how many different ones I've seen. So we're, so we're saying a few then. The family. A family. family. Okay. All right. You got my attention. <laughs> They're family. You got crew. my attention, Sonia. All right. You got my attention. <laughs> yeah, but no. And then there's a single, there's a single male Bigfoot that comes by himself and he, he's not part of that tribe. He comes like in late winter, about March, February, 
And then uh, there is a, well, I've seen, there's a wampus cat out here. There's a six foot tall cat like creature that wanders the hills in East Tennessee. And a wampus cat. What is a wampus cat? Now, now hold up. Now, I know cryptids. I know dog man. Now, a wampus cat. Now, somebody please tell me, Sonny, what a wampus cat is. Now, you told me, but tell the audience what it is. Yeah, people want to say that they're cougars or they're black panthers. No, we have those too, but this is different. This is a six, I mean, she was at least as tall as me. I'm 5'8". Um, this creature is just a tall cat-like creature. Uh, she has big cat eyes. She looks like one of those Mancoon cats. She has real slick hair. She has long, like, head hair. She has big green eyes. She has a snout of, like, a Mancoon cat. And she's, um, she walks on two legs. She doesn't have six legs. I've seen a, a lot of the legends and stuff said that she had six legs. But she walks on two legs. Um, she, I have to keep saying she because this creature had boobs. It had two breasts. It did. It, um. She, it, it looked like she was wearing like a like a leotard. Her skin was so slick, or her hair was so slick that she looked like she was wearing a leotard. Um, Crazy yeah. witch believes you. I've seen it. She says. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Like, well, this one. Okay, so I saw an all black one, and I think that one, the one I saw that was all black like that, because when I seen it, I was like, oh my god, a werewolf. I think that's a, maybe a male one because it looked more masculine than this one did. And this one, she was like a weird, like a, her hair was like a brownish blonde color, almost the color of mine. She had a blonde tail, but the rest of her body was like a brown color. Yeah. But she wasn't really dark. Um, but then the one I seen, I saw one up the road, which again, I thought it was the dog man or a werewolf because when it jumped out in front of me in the car, I said, oh my God, it's a werewolf. And there were people in my car and they were like, Sonia, that's a, that's a wolf. And I was like, that's a werewolf. And they was like, and then it kind of just dove out of the road. And my friend sitting in the passenger seat goes, Sonia, that was a, could you go? That was a werewolf. That was a werewolf, Sonia. And I was like, yeah, I know. And then it got real quiet in the car and for like 15 minutes, Nobody would say anything. And then finally, I was like, man, what about that werewolf? And they were like, we don't, they, they, to this day, my friends still won't talk about that much. They'll talk about it to a certain extent. But if I start like getting all excited about it, you know, when we're out in public and telling strangers, they get really kind of upset about it because they, they just don't want people to know that they saw a werewolf, I guess. I don't know. And a lot of them won't even go outside now. Like two of them, like I had four people, well, three people in the car besides myself. Two of them won't even, they used to come up to my house all the time. They won't come up here anymore. Um, between so you, the so dog you, man and so the you were just computer. driving and it just jumped out in front of you. Yeah. And that was up the road. And that, and that was when I was like 21 or so. So that was like, oh, God, 15 years ago. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, but we saw that one, but the one that was at my house, like she, st she stuck around. My dogs were outside with me. I went to feed my pigs is what happened. I went with me and my friend. She went with me, me and my friend Courtney. She was with me. We, it was like midnight. We'd been gone all day, but I didn't feed my pigs that day. So I knew I needed to do it when I got back. It didn't matter what time it was. And this was like February. So it was real cold. And all week long, all that whole week, every time I'd go out to feed the pigs, I would hear this chattering noise and I would hear these whistles and like this whistles. And I would just keep hearing this, like what sounded like almost like a little girl singing or like a, like a little dainty girl or like teenage girl singing or something and just a really sweet voice. And it would just sound like two kids chattering. And I, I kept hearing this and it was weird for me because it was like in February and that the, 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 the family of Bigfoots that live out here, they're usually up the mountain about that time when it gets real, real cold. And I know it sounds crazy, but they go up to the top of the mountain instead of like staying down here. I don't know if it's like the frost or the snow or whatever reason, but they usually go up, up the mountain. So I knew it wasn't them. And I, I never heard, I'd heard these sounds before, but not like this. I'd heard some of that before, but nothing like this. And again, I've heard foxes. I've heard owls. I know what all of that stuff sounds like bobcats cougars uh even we have a black panther up here pwra wants to argue with me but i know anywho um and i've been hearing those noises all week long and 
as I was walking to to feed the pigs, I had my bucket and I had a, I had a, like I had a crappy flashlight. My friend had my good flashlight and, um, we get there and I start like, we were still hearing the noise and everything's cool. Uh, I kept hearing the chattering that sound, it sounded like when you drive by a park, all the kids laughing and playing that sound. That's exactly what it sounded like. And I was like, what is that? And my friend was like standing behind me or she's standing like right beside me. And we were just talking, just chattering about stuff. And, just like she was like scanning the woods with the good flashlight. And I was still stirring the pig bucket and trying to empty the pig bucket into the, the pig thing. And just out of nowhere, she turns her flashlight off and gets behind me and starts standing behind me. And she's like, Hey, can we go? Are you ready to go? Can we go now? Can we go? Are you done? And I was like, Whoa, what's up? I said, are you okay? And she was like, yeah, I'm just, my feet are starting to hurt real bad. I want to go sit down right now. I said, okay, wow. yeah, I'm almost done. And I said, do you hear that noise? She said, yeah, I hear it. I said, what is that? I said, can I see that flashlight? And she, sh she like tossed the flashlight to me and like I caught it and I turned and I was standing up at that point and I turned to turn the good flashlight on and I went to spin around and looked up behind my pig pen and sitting on the bank behind my pig pen because my pig pen kind of goes uphill. So everything runs down the hill behind my pig pen on the ground sitting on her butt with her legs stuck out in front of her like this like she was um, you know just like she was sitting it was just sitting there watching us and my dogs was up there running around with it and what? one of my dogs had sat down beside her and she was petting my dog and I was just like well when I saw it I said what the f is that and I screamed it. I said what the f is that and my friend wouldn't say nothing and I was like yo Courtney do you see that and she wouldn't say anything and I was like Courtney do you see that? And she's like, yeah, I see it. And I said, what is that? She's like, I don't know, but it's been standing there for about, or it's been sitting there for about 10 minutes. Oh, I was like, well, man. first off, there's a monster in the woods and you're not going to say nothing. You're just going to get behind me. And then like, and she was like, well, I'm not sure I was seeing it. She wasn't, she wasn't sure that's what she was seeing. And she was so scared that she didn't want to say anything. Because if I would have told her that I've seen it too, then it would make it real. And I've learned that about people. A lot of people don't want to see things. My mom's one of those people. But she was just, I, and I was mad. I was like, what? I was like, there's, and I really didn't think she was a monster because I wasn't scared of this thing. As soon as I seen it, I was just like, what the F is that? And, and I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're out, <laughs> you're out slopping the figs. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, you take your light, you're, you're, you're in, you're just flashing this light and you see this creature what is going through your mind well i well, my, what was going through my mind the first part of it was why my friend didn't tell me that there was this creature but like in my mind she was beautiful like i'd never seen like i i know the bigfoots they're there i see the lights in the sky i believe in aliens and i i'd never seen this i'd never even seen this on a cryptid show and i want at the time i had heard a lot of things but they never had seen anything and they couldn't describe to me what, you know, this was. And I just, I didn't know about the wampus cat at the time. I like, well, I heard wampus cat, you know, I always thought it was just a black panther screaming, you know, that's what they called that. In reality, it's never the black panther screaming at night. It was always the time the Bigfoots move their circle. They would, they would go with the black panthers out here. That's, you know, that's kind of related, but, yeah. whatever. Um, but in my mind, I just stood there. I wasn't going to go in. She didn't move. She just kept sitting there. Like I said, my dog sat down beside her and she was petting my dog. And I was so like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you're telling me this wampus cat was petting your dog. Yes. And I thought your friend was petting your dog. No, the wampus cat. My dog had went up and sat beside because she was sitting on her butt. Oh, my friend God. Out in front of her. And my dog. Had, okay. So my dog's. He had done run off that week once and he kept running off and I couldn't, and he never runs off. Like he's the first one back at the door that week. I had to pick him up. I had to pick him up down the road and come back and he would stay gone at night and he would never stay gone. And I was like, okay, something's really weird. It was that same dog. Now I know why he wouldn't come in at night. And it, like to this day, like it, uh, after the wampus cat went away, like after she wasn't there, <coughs> sorry after she left um my dog was missing for like eight days i had to pick him up across the mountain and i'm talking about like um 
five miles, six miles from here, which in country roads, you know, or even over the mountain, that's still a long ways. Uh, I had to go to my neighbors, you know, across the mountain to go pick up my dog because she found him. She's like, he looks starved to death. I was like, he's been gone for eight days. He should be starved to death. He was depressed after that. He wouldn't go outside. He sat at the door and whined. He would just lay on the porch. It took him a while to get over her not being out in the woods no more. That's the truth about that. Like, it's so weird. Like, like my other friend, like who saw the wampus cat with me, she, she'll tell you exactly what I seen. She'll describe to a T what I'd seen. Um, but she just doesn't like to talk about it because it scares her. She said, um, she told my, she told my mom, she was like, listen, Sonia, she's like, since I've been hanging out with Sonia, she said, I've seen Bigfoot. She showed me the lights in the sky. She said, I can't explain some of them because we saw the first time I showed her the lights in the sky, it was one of the lights that appeared. And I was like, oh, there's one. And it came out and it stopped. And when it stopped, it went and took off like it was in like, you know, hyperdrive. And she was like, what was that? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, it stopped. And it was like it knew you was talking about it. And I was like, I know they know. They know I'm talking about them. They can hear me and the way I can hear them. I was a little... I'm still shocked. No, the it was just scat. little people. There are there are like phase and um I I'm a big believer in um I guess goblins, I don't know what you would call them, like forest people, but like like when you lay your lighter down and you know it was beside you and then you never see that lighter again or that sock. Things like that. I believe I believe things play tricks on us like that, but I personally have never yeah. seen any of them. I call people. them gremlins in my studio. That's gremlins, what I call them. Right. It's gremlins. Oh. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, what color was it? That was so weird that you said gremlin. Did you, my light went out. See? Yeah. See it? Yeah. That's the first time you said that. <laughs> so weird. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> now they're messing with me. That was weird. Okay. Office cat. Weird. Dogs, man, I mean, psychics, Bigfoot. Now, now, one thing that, so, I, so you got a clan. So what about eye shine? What color eye shine do you see? Um, it depends on the Bigfoot. Um, different ones have different color eye shine. Um, the oldest one, she's a female. She's gray. She's gray colored. She's, she's very vocal. She's, she's, um. She reminds me of somebody's mean mammal, you know, like your mean mammal, like, ah, like I, I feel like that's who she is. Like, you know, um, right, she's got white right. eye shine. Her eye shine is white. There's a big male that he's like the guardian. He always guards. Anytime you see them out, anytime the other ones are out, he's always out no matter what. He has like really yellow eye shine, um, like orangish yellow. And huh. a lot of them have blue, green, or like blue and just green. Um, red, I've seen red, like a shade, I guess, orange, red, you know. Um, yeah. So, depending, just depending on the Bigfoots. That I've is something. I guess that kind of gives you a hint of how many there may or may not be out here. And again, I believe there's a portal out here. Um, I live right down from the, like, I have a big creek in front of my front of my house that's spring fed so you know we're always in these caverns and things but there's a spot on top of my hill that I can't explain I guess I'm gonna have to go up there and take pictures of it because I, I I could have been making casts I could have been trying to take pictures of these creatures I've and seen things pictures like that. with the lighter on the ground that you've taken yeah that was like that was like my first time I was like you know what I should take a picture of this like, I guess I see it so often, like there's so many markers out in the woods. I've been trying to teach myself how to learn how to like read them and, and they're directional markers. They're, they're, they're cautious, caution markers. You know what I mean? They, they bend the trees over. They love the two pointed stick, like anything with a prong in it, the two points, you know, stick. That's one of their favorite sticks to use. And I think that that's like, um. Like, I, I don't know. It just, you just know that's one of those markings when you see that, you know. The white and orange orbs, I've seen, uh, Crazy Witch said something about the white and orange orbs. I have seen the orange ones. I have not seen any white orbs, but I have seen orange orbs, fiery red color. 
out here. I've seen one in the sky and I've seen a couple in the woods. And you know they're orbs. The thing about a light, when you're carrying a light and you're walking through the woods, the light bounces. You cannot help it. There's nothing you could do unless you carry your light on a, I don't know, like, I, there's no way you can carry your light on anything that's not going to bounce as you move. So, you can always see the orbs when they come through the woods. They're always very steady, and they never change course. They always just keep going the way they go. The Y sticks. That's, yeah, that's that's a good way to describe them. But, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking God. about? We can talk about all of this. So, like, what else are we talking about? I've seen so many things, though. Um, I saw a gargoyle or the Mothman. I'm not sure what it was because it was small. And I know the Mothman is supposed to be a shift shaper or ship uh, shape shifter. Uh-huh. Dyslex- Dyslex- Hi, I'm dyslexic. That's all right. But like, um, like I know, like he can change shape. So whatever I saw, I saw it at a party and a girl saw it, too. And she was. Like, she was pretty upset with me because she was having a good night and we were all having a really great night. And this thing flew out of the tree. I, I saw it land in the tree. And as soon as it kind of landed in the tree, it turned around and flew right back out of the tree. And a lot of people kind of saw it take off, but they didn't see it land. And I was like, did you all see that? And of course, anytime I say that to people, they're like, oh, yeah, Sonia's seeing her Bigfoots again. And I'm like, this, this wasn't even at my house. This is at somebody else's house. Um. But they joke with me about that. And I was like, no, no. And I described to them what I thought I saw. And everybody was like, well, yeah, it was probably just an owl. <laughs> like, what kind of owls do you out have out here? I was in North Carolina when it happened. <laughs> yeah, and right. <laughs> yeah. it was so funny. It was like, okay, um, this girl, while I was describing that, she just got up in the middle of the party and looked at me. And she was like, Ugh, and just, you know, and I was like, I could tell I, I like my heart. I could hear her in her head. She was like, damn you, Sonia. Whatever I'd done, she was like, damn you. And she went inside, never came out. The next morning, I kind of avoided her the rest of the night because she wouldn't speak to me. She wouldn't even make eye contact with me. And I was like, what did wow. I do? Yeah. So the next morning, the party, you know, is daylight or whatever. Uh, we mostly stung, like hung out by the fire all night and stuff. You know, people went back and forth. But she finally come back outside. And she finally was like, hey, I saw that, that thing that you were describing last night. She said, I saw it. She goes, I was tripping, though. And I'll be honest with you. I thought maybe I was just seeing stuff. And she said, until you said something, I didn't think it was real. And she said, as soon as you started telling everybody what you saw, and she said, you described to a T what I'd seen. She said, I knew whatever we just saw was real. And she said, and I wasn't going to stay out here all night with that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I ruined her night by by seeing it. I didn't ruin her night. That thing did. And because she's seen it too, and I saw it, it made it real. And she wasn't going to sit outside with us all night by the fire and, you know, get drug off or whatever. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So here we got, ladies and gentlemen, things going bump in the night, creatures flying in the air, wampus cats, Bigfoot, <laughs> lights. Now, do you want to really top it off? What about the chicken coop and the juvenile Sasquatch? Oh, yeah. Well, see, oh, that, that that Sasquatch is the single male that roams by himself. Um, if I had any way to describe him, I would describe him as what they call the skunk ape because he's like a green color and he stinks. He smells like burnt coffee and skunk or like a pocat. I don't know if anybody there's a difference between skunks and pocats. There's there yes, are. There is yeah. a difference. Yeah. And po- it, so it smells like burnt coffee and a pocat like he, I know when he's around, I know when he, and he only comes, like I said, he usually only comes that one time a year at the very late winter. So I don't know if he's traveling like back to Florida, which I always, I, in my mind, I, I think that's where he goes. Like, I don't, I make my stories up about my there creatures. There you go, Tim T down there in Florida. He's on his way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because he's males and he's a green color and like, he looks like moss and smells like, like. Like burnt coffee and a polecat. Like, wow. <laughs> but like he came outside. Um, something I've been messing with my chicken coop, and I knew something had been messing with my chicken coop, and I knew it wasn't my other Bigfoots again. I know I uh, we had a discussion a, a bunch of years ago. Like I went, I had to go out in the woods and physically yell into the woods to for the Sasquatches to not eat my cats or to make sure that my animals stayed safe. 
I haven't, well, up until this week, and I, I guess I, I was going to speak too soon, but up until this week, we haven't had any animals go missing. We just recently had two dogs go missing, and my neighbor had a dog go missing, but for like, for the last, like, you know, 20 years, we've had pretty good record for animals, you know, but, uh, so anyway, so, uh, my sister's boyfriend came to me and she, he, he was like, yay, uh, Sonia, something was trying to get into your chicken coop. He said, whatever it was, try to rip the door off of it, rip the top off of it. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, I don't know if it was a bunch of raccoons. He said, cause it would take a bunch. And I was like, I knew what it was. I was like, okay, Tom, that's cool. Um, Tom now knows about the Sasquatch. I don't think he was a firm believer then. But he knows now because he's been here for the last five years. And he was also he also went into the woods with me when we had a um, because we had like a wampus cat experience together. So after I'd seen her, he two days later, he went into the woods with me and he had his wampus cat experience that he doesn't talk about much because he's not sure. He never saw saw it. He only saw its tail and only heard the noise it was making and only knew that it would get so close to you that you couldn't catch it with your own flashlight that she would run around you so fast. But anyway, so that night I was like, all right, I got it. I was going to leave my back door open and I have a floodlight out back there. So I drug my chickens to make sure that they would be in the, the, the right there at the light. So when I came out the back door, I could step out the back door, the door. And as I step out, the light would come on and I would see I would catch it this time because I was sure it wasn't my my Sasquatches because I was sure they wouldn't do that. They might eat the corn out of my garden like they did a couple times, but they won't eat my animals. Um, so I heard I like I heard the dogs barking and I heard my chicken and I was like, I knew it. And I got up and I ran right out the back door and my friend went with me. She was I had a friend with me. She came out the back door with me. And as soon as we stepped out on the back porch, it had the door and it dropped the door and it turned and it just stepped back into the tree. Yeah. And there's a big cedar tree that sits there. And where he's that green color, where he's that green color, he just stepped back into the tree. And where my eyes, because your eyes, you see everything inverted. Everything has to, and then your mind fills in the rest of what you're seeing. Right. But right, if you right. blink really fast and you make your eyes, because I have this eye doesn't, one of my eyes doesn't focus right. So sometimes I have to make myself blink. And when you do, your eyes will refocus stuff and reshift stuff. And she couldn't, she's like, oh, he's gone. And I was like, no, he's still standing there. And I could tell that he was still standing there, but you couldn't see him with your eyes just looking. You know, I knew he was there a minute ago, but unless I blinked my eyes a bunch, I couldn't really tell that he was there. But he was still there. And she was like, did you see that? And I was like, yeah, I saw that. She's like, that was that was a Bigfoot. And I said, yeah, yeah. I thought he was messing with my chickens. She's like, yeah, I seen him. And I was like, yeah. And she was just like, uh -huh. you know, she was so excited because she was like, but I saw a Bigfoot. And I was like, yeah. I was like, you stay up here. There's no telling what you might see. And I've had, like, I've got tons of friends who, um, who've come up here and stayed the night with me and they've had their own like experiences. I've had all kinds of my friends have had, um, been hit in the face with hickory nuts or walnuts, rocks. Wow. <laughs> Not me though. Just them. I don't think that, I, and that's the, people kept asking me why I don't bring people up here very much. And I do bring my friends and that stuff happens to them, but I'm, I'm afraid to bring too many people up here, you know, because I don't want to break that bond that I have, like, which I don't think I could, I guess, you know, just doubting myself, but I don't want to break anything. I don't want to make them distrust me or think that, you know, that I was trying to be sneaky. <laughs> My gosh. I mean, what, what is, so you walk out <laughs> on the back door, the floodlight goes off, the, 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 the creature's like, ah, he caught red handed. He did. He dropped it. He dropped everything and just stepped back. He was like, oh, she got me. And I was like, yeah, I knew you were coming back. And I did. And like, and it's really funny too now. Like I leave him stuff to eat now because one year that like uh, the next year, who oh, it made me mad. The next year he eat my, uh, as a first year I planted um, uh, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are a winter crop. Um, my Brussels sprouts were growing and I, I love Brussels sprouts and they were so cute and I was so happy. I'll have to show you. I just found the other day. I just found the picture I took in the garden. Um, but he ate my Brussels sprouts like the next year. And I was like, I'm going to have to start. He ate every one of them. He picked every one of them off and left a huge footprint right there beside the Brussels sprout stem. Um, uh, and ate all my broccoli, wow. he ate all the 
broccoli. The leaves were coming up because broccoli is a winter crop too. Uh, so yeah, so my cauliflower bro broccoli and my Brussels sprouts didn't make it that year. They all got picked clean. So now I try to anytime um, February coming into March, I try to leave as much uh, potatoes, anything I can leave in the woods, uh, anything that's I've left peanut butter, snack cakes, <laughs> biscuits. I mean, you name it. I've left all kinds of things. I try to I try to give him a snack now so he'll stop snacking on my things. <laughs> but the, but I thought it was I thought he's not supposed to do that. I mean I Who's hear that? good things and bad things about gifting. I don't know. Well, I maybe somebody else has maybe somebody just left. Maybe it was gluten free or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, like oh I don't know. God. Like I've left my I've left him all kinds of stuff. Um. The ones around here, they 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 love apples. They're the thing, apples, and uh, they love oranges. Um, I leave them a lot of potatoes, but because potatoes can, uh, potatoes can like sit out in the weather, and not you don't have to worry about the birds eating them much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never like, I've I've never had a problem with, you know, the gifting thing, but. They've never been aggressive towards you or anything, or no. But I had a friend here one time, and she was out. We were we were packing my car. Um, it's that same time, like I was like moving from North Carolina, so I had to make two trips. So I'd I had come, I'd went to North Carolina and had my whole car full of stuff. And oh no, we were going to. I was cleaning out my car to go to North Carolina to get my stuff. And my friend was here with me, and she was she was having her own like girlfriend issues or whatever with her girlfriend and she was crying. And so the whole time we're having all this, we're going, going through all this stuff. She's crying. And every time she would cry really loud, the Bigfoots would make fun of her. They had been doing it all night and she was like, she heard it and she knew she, when she knows about the Bigfoot, so she knows they're there because she would go with me all the time to feed my pigs and the Bigfoots, um, especially the younger ones, they like to walk through the woods with you. They'll walk when you walk. They do it all the time. Um, they do it at night. They do it. I mean, they do it all the time. So anytime I'd walk back there to feed the pigs, the Bigfoots would walk with us. Um, so she knew about the Bigfoots. So she knew what it was making fun of her. And she was like, he's, he's making fun of me. And he, she's just like crying and she starts laughing and he starts making fun of her laughing. And, and, and and I was like, he's making fun of you. And I started laughing and she starts laughing. So she's laugh crying. And we're kind of in this moment where she's like, I can't believe this Bigfoot is making fun of me. And I was like, yeah, he's making fun of you. And I was I'm like, he's mocking you. He was mocking her. And, and about that time, I have my little dogs outside. So my little three pound chihuahua, Ivy, she sees something and she starts running towards my bridge down here and starts barking. And I'm like, oh no. And as, as Ivy's running... Ivy's the only dog out of all of my dogs who ran towards the bridge. And about that time, because that's where the laughing was coming from, like the thing making fun of her, that's where the noise was coming from. And about that time, it comes across my bridge like this, Bleh! like that, like making fun of my friend and like screaming and like kept running towards like just and it was just running across the bridge. It didn't like run towards us. It just went across the bridge and into the woods. You'd have to understand, like my driveway comes down. There's a field on this side of the driveway, and then there's a... No, I would not understand. I would be turning around and running like hell on no, the opposite it way. Was so, <laughs> it was so funny because she was just... We were so in shock about it. Like, not in shock, because they had been messing with us anyway. Um, Like, uh, they, they, they've been throwing stuff at the house. They had, uh, like I said, they'd been making fun of her. They'd been following us, like, back and forth through the woods, because she stayed with me a lot. And her brother's the one that was my best friend that died last week. And he stayed with me a lot. So he, he was here a lot. He had a, like, he had a lot of experience too. Both of them do their brother and sister. So both of them like have had had, a, have had a lot of experiences up here with the Bigfoot. And, and that one right there, that was the first time I'd ever seen. Like I knew the Bigfoots, they mess with you all the time, but that was the first time they physically showed themselves to somebody just to make, just to just for a joke, if that makes sense. Like 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 just, just to do it. Just you know what I mean. He, they were yeah, they, I know what you mean. Just, just, 
just to make fun of my friend, which they knew her anyway, just to make fun of her and to freak her out. Like, I think they were trying to make her feel better. And that in my mind, that, that's all I could think. I was like, I think he was like, I think they were mocking you because you're acting silly over this stupid girl that doesn't even like you. And they can hear you crying and they're just trying to make you feel better. And, you know, so we talked about it and we, we kind of in our, in our own way, feel like he was just trying to make her feel better about what she's seen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm in the woods standing on a hill and I see something with arms above its head. <laughs> I am not standing still. I am not laughing. I am running to the hill to get to some light or something. No, like, no. Like, why not? Like, I mean, if something was going to get you, it would have already got you. Like, it's... Well, you no. got a point there. All right. All right. You got Grizzly <laughs> on that one. I mean, if I ever go missing, I'm just going to let you know, you're going to know what happened to me. I mm, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Something drug me off because I was curious. Oh. <laughs> uh. What do you think about this, Tim? Tim in Florida. Crazy witch. Who else is out there listening to this? Isn't this something? <laughs> you know, we always hear about these people, but we never have a chance to ask questions. Everybody's in shock and awe. So, it's, I mean, the eye shines. Wampus cats. Gargles. All of them, like, I'm so blessed. I, I feel so honored i feel honored to, for the universe to show me these things or maybe it's the fact that you have to know that they're there to see them maybe you have to like because i'm always alert like i have no idea just i have no idea what i'm going to see next and i mean me and my sister a couple weeks ago we were um in jamestown tennessee on the property where the burn for tennessee is um we were out there just doing a little thing and we saw a, a, like a new light in the sky or lights I would say I saw we saw a new UFO that I had never seen. And I'd, I've seen a bunch. I've seen a bunch of things. I've seen the rocket and, you know, coming and like coming out of the atmosphere and coming back in the atmosphere, which is creepy and looks crazy. Um, but this was new. This was huge and something I'd never seen before. Um, I mean, it was like, I don't know. I mean, the thing, it was like a rectangle, like in a rectangle shape. It was as long as a skyscraper. I mean, it was at least 14 stories. Oh, only 14 stories, as long as a skyscraper. Tim in Florida, I'm not afraid. They get very close to us. I can yeah. uh, hear them get close. Yeah. And they, and they know you. Them. And they know, like, if yeah. I have to go out, if I have to go out with the coon dogs, like, we have a lot of people that run their coon dogs out here. Um, if I have to go out and shoot around just to scare the coon dogs off the property because, like, people don't, you know, you can't run your dogs on your property without them wanting to get on other people's property. And it happens. But, you do, you know, sometimes you just, um, let's just go ahead and scare all the animals off so nobody nobody wins. But right, I, I'll right. go out there and I'll have to warn the Bigfoots that I'm going to shoot. They know. Like, I have to give them a warning that that's me and it's cool. And that, uh, I feel like they know what that I'm doing that. Cause they, I mean, I've had my gun with me several times and they've come up to me even with my gun on me. So, and the wampus cat too, she wasn't, I always carry my gun. It isn't for them anyway. No, it's, it's just for the crackheads out there making check and bake <laughs> meth in the woods. Right. It's yeah, for the yeah, we go. Well, now, well, see my neighbors own like, they own like 400 acres beside me. And then I own 58 here. And then my other neighbor owns uh, like 50 acres on that side. And then there's Norris Lake. Um, there's the lake. So the rest of it, TWRA owns or TVA owns. So wow, I'm in a really good spot as far as traveling. I'm in the Clinch Mountain area. So uh, <sighs> in the valley. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Sonia, Psyche, yeah. Bigfoot, Wampus Cat, UFO, Skyscrapers. And see, and there's so, and it's so funny too, because it's like all the things that I, I see and love and like, I have so much love for. There's so many, there's not that many places like in the world that like, I say that, but there's a lot of people like cryptid, but there's not a lot of places for me in the world where I could find something that I just absolutely love. Like, right, and, right. you know, yeah. but being just... able to see all those things has brought me to here. So, you know, people dream. A lifetime just to even get a glimpse of Sasquatch. And you just walk out your door and like, hey, baby, what's up? 
Yeah, and I am, and I realize that I am very fortunate that I get to, I get to be so close with these creatures, and I have for so many years. And I'm talking about like, I knew they were there when I was little. I think the first time I ever saw Bigfoot, I was like, like I, I know that I saw Bigfoot. I was like eight, and it, then you come in and you tell your parents, "Hey, I saw Bigfoot," and they're like, "Uh, yeah, okay, that was your imagination. Take your ass back outside and go back oh. and go play. Like, you know, we don't have time for this." And and that kills a lot of stuff. Do you know how many times kids have really saw stuff and went to tell their parents that I've seen this and, you know, their parents called them liars and thrown them. It was their imagination. At that point, are you going to believe that it was your imagination or are you going to distrust your parents because that they didn't take the time to listen to you? I mean, it causes a lot of like, you know, riffs. So your parents like kind of, they, they, they kill your shine, you know, because they also want you to go back out and play. And they also, my mom, she doesn't like, to talk about the things that are out there. She knows they're out there and she doesn't, she just doesn't like to talk about it. Cause it makes, um, cause she has a hard time walking in from the car into the house. And that's really what it is. She's scared of the dark cause she's seen some stuff and even hurt. My dad saw some things out here, um, which is weird. You were, you did a show with somebody. I think you guys did a show with somebody and they were talking about like these shadow creatures, these oh, shadow yeah. creatures. World. Oh, absolutely. Like they're not the same thing as Bigfoot. These are not, it wasn't, I mean, these things like hover, like they hover above the land. Like they are literally like what you would think is a shadow creature. And my dad's seen them and my dad's not scared of like anything. He, we went after Bigfoot. Like we went straight after Bigfoot. The first time we ever heard it, we were in the woods. Um, we've had Bigfoot like come out in front of us and be able to hear him walking in front of us and not be able to see him. But whatever my dad saw that night, it freaked him out. Like it scared him. He had seen a lot of things, but this, whatever this was, it just, I guess because it had just, they were small, like shadow creatures that were floating, you know, they like, that were just floating above above the land and and it, i guess it just it freaked him out like he just i guess he couldn't identify it so it always you know he always questioned what right, it was right now sonia tell the ladies and gentlemen out in the audience your ethnic background some history now this <laughs> is going to tie some things together here yeah about so uh some things yeah, so like I, I I'm I'm indigenous and I'm a Lungeon. So and you know, um a lot of the like I, I guess a lot of our background, like a lot my my grandparents, both sets of my mom's grandparents on both sides, on her mother and her father's side, they were all for it and the uh the Trail of Tears. They all had to walk to Oklahoma and then walk back, you know. But I guess in a good way, like they met they actually all met um, their spouses, like my great grandparents and their spouses. They all met while they were out there. So they all came back and ended up as family back here in Tennessee. So I guess, you know, everything happens for a reason. Not that that wouldn't have happened before, but, you know. It, so, it maybe so, what, was. so what you're trying to tell people, you got Indian in you? No, I wouldn't say I don't. I don't like to use the word Indian. It's indigenous. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like Help Native me American. out. Native American. Help Grizzly out. What yeah. what type of indigenous is yeah I, I have you in you? What I gotta have a little more. <laughs> yeah, what, what what type of blood do you have in you? Uh, let's see, uh, Blackfoot, Cherokee, and there's another one. I can look it up. I cannot remember the name, and I, I'm going to not pronounce it right, which is going to make me feel feel bad. Sequoia so, and something else, and the other so one. See, is ladies and gentlemen, when I what the point I'm trying to make is is that. When I tell people, if you ever want to go Sasquatching, you always go to the indigenous tribe, indigenous tribe, Indian tribe, go to the local tribe and ask them for permission and seek guidance. For some reason, they will help you and guide you and show you the proper way and it, teach it, you. Like I, I, uh, like I went out there and I did a couple of like ceremonies and stuff with a couple of like, uh, with the Cherokee out in, um, in North Carolina, which was really cool because like, they're really open about like, um, about their, like, ab about anything that you want to know. They're very open about anything you want to ask. And it's really cool because, um, 
that's how, like, I didn't even know, like, the wampus cat, like, existed until I looked up cat-like creatures in East Tennessee, and that's when it brought up the Cherokee legend of the wampus cat, which made so much sense, like, if reading the legend and what they say about it, because man has kind of come in and whitewashed, like, a lot of their stories, right. so to be able to talk to them, um, like, they talked about the, like, a lot of the indigenous tribes talked about Bigfoot or the big hairy men in the forest and how that they had, you know, they had fought these, these things or that they had fought these big hairy men or whatever. They would steal, they would snatch up, you know, um, you would hear these stories that they would snatch people or in the village and take them into the woods or they would take the kids or off or whatever. Right. And <clears throat> like you talk to the Cherokee about it and they're like, oh yeah, that's just stuff we told the white man to stay out of the forest. And that's stuff we just told the kids to stay out of trouble. You know, <laughs> you find <laughs> it like they just, since they were gonna like stuff was gonna get spread the way they wanted to anyway, like they just they just spread all kinds of just folklore to a lot of white people, you know. But then there's a lot of truth in a lot of it. So, but ah, Bigfoot, they were friends with Bigfoots, it, it, but they told everybody else that you stay out of the forest because the Bigfoots would get you. And I believe, like, at, like any any celestial creature creature which we all are anything that is aware anything that can hide that good must be aware that it needs to hide right so being aware like that like I, I, we're all connected like we're gonna know that they're there we're gonna be able to like we'll be able to they'll they, they'll be able to tell whether you're a good person or not now like, tracker says yeah. that explains it sonia your family seems to be run in indigenous native blood see it is. It's true. That was my point. That's yeah, my, my point. <laughs> my dad was so dark skinned and stuff. Like they would speak Spanish. Like, he was a truck driver for a little while and he would go to like, we went out West a couple of times and they would speak Spanish to him and he would just be like, Whoa, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh man, that's awful. No, 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 it's like, well, he's just so dark skinned. And like my mom, like my mom's family, um, our old census paper, like my grandmother, like we got all of our census records and stuff. And a lot of the times the census people wouldn't even, I don't I know asked. if it was census people, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even come to your property because people were scared of certain mountain folk back in the day. Uh, and when a lot of our family got back from the, the trail of tears there, and when they got back from Oklahoma, they told people they were black. Because it was way better being black than it was being indigenous um, or, you know, Native American or Indian or whatever you want to call it. Because then when they got back, they, they either told people they were black and that was fine. Or the neighbors just didn't know much about them because they kept to themselves and they called them black. So it was one or the other. But there's a lot wow. of them that I'm a Milano or black Melungeon. A black wow. foot. Baby. I mean, and then our records go back into... Yeah, because I don't know why, like, I guess doing all this history, like, or doing this on my own, you know, ancestral history and stuff, like, I guess I just didn't realize how recent, you know, the Trail of Tears was. You know, when yeah. I was in school, they taught it like it was a thousand years ago, you know, 500 years ago. And it was like, no, that was like, that was like a, that was less. At the time, it was like 120 years ago when I was in school right, or whatever. Right, was like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we weren't taught like that. And then when you get older, I'm such a history buff because you cannot you cannot know your own spirituality. You cannot know your own history without knowing everyone's history and everyone's everyone's opinion of it, because everything's a theory. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they said they can prove. Well, you weren't there, were you? You know, uh, <laughs> no, you because my ancestors like came across the boat in 1884. And they arrived in Buffalo, New York, and uh, they were twin brothers, Ottomans. And I'm not going to mention their last names for privacy reasons. And they had 13 kids each. One went to Pennsylvania, and the 13 kids split up. And that's how we got our branches across the United States. My last name is very different, which you know it is. So, But for security reasons, we'll leave, it, we'll leave it at that. But yeah. Bears are my you know, favorite animals, so that helps. Yeah, but see, I always had, I always called somebody squatting bear. So, yeah. Anyways, I will, I will not explain, ladies. Who don't ask what that means on the air. So I will not <laughs> explain what that means. Uh, it, it is funny. So, but anyway, Sonya got it. Look at her; she's turning red. Norma, 
uh, they erased our history and gave us a story that fits their narrative. They did. Look and at I Aunt did. Jemima. Okay, Look no. At, uh... <clears throat> Go ahead. I've got, I've got three. I've got, I've got a niece and two nephews. Um, they're in school. My niece, her history book, when she was like, I guess in the fifth or sixth grade, her history book said that when European settlers come here to this country. The natives were so nice that they moved out west to give the Europeans land to settle. I said, so they moved out in the desert where there wasn't nothing and just to let the white men settle. That was so nice of them. <laughs> That's what her history book says. And, and this was just a few years ago. She's 15 now. This was like five years ago. Uh, it says it's European settlers. I, I had a conniption. I, if I could find that Facebook post, I'll send it to you. Um, I mean, I had I, I had a conniption. Like, uh, uh, Grizzly did not mean to start World War Four. You know, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, Sonia. I still love you. <laughs> okay, I'm Anyways, cool. Anyways, all right. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, you know, it, it, people do. People race history. People want to change history. People don't want to know history. Well, they the winners always get history. like, and that's that, and it's so funny because who gets to write the history books anyway? The winners. Mm. Well, that's that's uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm telling you, it has been an interesting show with her this show and she was on the last show at the end so and that, very that amazing. Is interesting for me because i've only had my card i've only had one reading from other people besides my one of my best friends and she when she read my cards and it's the only time i've ever had them read like this she read my cards and she told me everything i'd ever thought in my head Everything I had been thinking, everything I had thought about, everything I'd kept secret inside myself, she said it to me, to my face. And I've been a different person ever since that happened because I knew yeah. that, like, I, it's, it's things that had to convince me that this was real. And that's what's so sad that I needed such hard convincing when I, because I was doubting myself. You cannot doubt yourself. You, we are so powerful as people. Now, question. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Lean forward so I can see your eyes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you have doubts now? Like, I... Like, uh, yeah, uh, 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 that's <clears> about <throat> what? I don't have any doubts. Like, there's no doubts. It's just, um... It's just, um... No, I don't have any doubts. Neither do I. It's just reconfirmed again. By two different other people from the last show. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what we're talking about, go back and watch it. And we're not going to repeat it. I don't want to give her another embarrassment on the air. Norma, well, the allegedly the Vatican has all was, the history. <laughs> like, I was late getting on this show because I have I was trying to recoup from that. And then I was like, because I wasn't, like, I just wasn't ready. I, I didn't plan on sitting in my room. Or maybe I did. I don't know. Like, this is my natural uh, habitat anyway. But, like. Uh, uh, do, do, you want, do you want me to? I, hey, I will. I will tell the world again. I, oh, I have no shame. No, I was just so flustered. I have. Grizzly <laughs> has no shame. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes again. Yes, Grizzly's coming out of the closet, ladies and gentlemen. You're just doing that on purpose. <laughs> no, Grizzly is coming out of the closet. He is going to uh, open up the back door. You really got to end. stop saying coming out of the closet, too. I know. It doesn't yeah. sound right, does it? Yeah. Sound? All right. So it goes a little something like this, right? No, I'm not going to rap. So don't go like that, ladies and gentlemen. So let me take you back. So right before you, I want to move. I have a lot of psychic friends in my network, okay? So, before I moved, I was told when I was going to move, how I was going to move, when I was going to move, and where to. And I thought it was all a bunch of bullarky. So, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, right? Okay. So what? Well, I went on this journey, and uh, during this journey, I did a bunch of interviews with a bunch of psychics and mediums and people that said that they had abilities. And I wanted to prove them wrong. And here comes Tracker. You're welcome. Here it comes. I am. I'm going to let it have it. So this is the part of Grizzly that you never see. 
So during this one interview on the psychic, the psychic told me that, hey, you, you tap dance. And I'm like, no, I don't tap dance. I'm like, you know, there's no way I don't tap dance. She's like, no, you, you, you'd love to tap. So I'm like, no, stop. I don't tap. She says, would you just button it up? You'd love. Just listen to me. Hear me out. I was like, okay. She's like, you're down to lake. You go on the porch, on the outside of the porch. You play your trumpet at 6 o'clock every evening. And you play taps. And it echoes for miles at the lake and i'm like oh. she's like your grandfather loves that because he never got to see you play the trumpet so that really got my you know my mind open so anyway to make a long story short at the end of the interview she says hey when you move you're gonna go see a dentist i'm like what i got good teeth that was, i don't know what she's talking about well ladies and gentlemen i moved when they said i was gonna move and all this other stuff and well, during that move, one of somebody else said, when you move, when you get there, you're going to meet this girl. And this girl is going to look like this. And they described this girl to a T. I'm talking hair, shape, size, everything. I'm talking like you were doing a narrative in a police report, like somebody robbed the bank. I mean, that was that descriptive. And I'm like, whatever, whatever. Well, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, Grizzly moved to that location where I did not know I was going to move. Put my new studio up where I was not knowing I was going to put my new studio up. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you I was going to write a book? I did not know I was going to write a book. So, yes. So, yeah, I'm writing a book. And so, anyway, so during this process, the past couple of months, recently, out of nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, just out of nowhere, this girl just comes out and starts talking to me. And I was like, huh, well, this is strange. And we were talking, you know, just back and forth, just the hair, you know. I mean, I got this big wall that's put up and everything. You know, I don't trust nobody, you know. I don't. So I asked for a picture. And she sends me one. I'm like, <gasps> I was like, wait a minute. No, he's like, come on. So I had this panel of psychics, ladies and gentlemen, that are I have access to that I use for projects and panels and other things, whatnot. So I went to him, it's like, hey, everybody, look, bam, here's this picture of this girl. Is this the one that is supposed to be um, looking at or looking for or supposed to meet? And I'm gonna let Sonia take over from there. Sonia, <laughs> action. Yeah, and and. And it was funny because I was on like, I was on that show panels, you know, with people. So, and everybody, and, and they, they really did dance around everything and they didn't describe her at all. <laughs> but her, like one of the, the girls, Carol Ann or Carolyn, yeah, Carol Ann, yeah. Carolyn, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she described me almost to a T. I mean, even like, so red is my <clears throat> like i hate the color red except for unless i'm wearing it i look really good in red and the native american thing she described the Amer the native american thing and um my hair being blonde my hair's always been this color besides this like rainbow patch that i have in it which i have kept in since i was 15 my hair is the natural color that it's been so i like to Brag about that. Oh, look at there. Carolyn just jumped on. Yes, Carolyn. Oh, yes, we're talking yeah, about you. Yes. And the yeah. way she described her, like she was describing me, and I knew it right then. And I read my I read my own cards. Like I did a card reading. And I was because I was like, because I had a crush on you anyway. And I guess it's it was one of those things that was just like, mm, no. You know, like, oh no, I'm just I'm I'm just, I guess I felt seen too. And there's a respect. I like, I have a lot of respect for you because I, I really enjoy your show and the way you talk to I people. And the way, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the way you do things. And, and that's like, and so like, I always have a crush on people that I have like respect for like that, but it was different. Like I read my cards and when she described that, I was like, oh my gosh, he just met me. <laughs> he just met me. And then like how she described everything that, that, that person would be. I was like, she just described me to a T. And, like and Carolyn did. kept saying, both you know, it was Kelly Joe both too, of us, yeah, both of us has got this wall up and she kept saying, it's not going to work. And she said, the best way I can tell you, Grizzly, since you were in law enforcement, 
we're going to use crime scene tape. It's going to take one of you all to take a pair of scissors to cut that crime seat tape. Then once it's cut, it's all going to come running together. It's all going to come together. And I, and I start laughing. Look at her. Caution tape. Sorry. Caution tape. That's right. Caution tape. Thank you. And I appreciate that. And, uh, and I start laughing. And I was like, huh. Well, in the background, Sonia knew the whole time what was going on. I didn't. So nobody wanted to hurt my feelings, said this girl, that I submitted to this group of panel of psychics to validate if this girl was the right one or not, was not. But they didn't want to say no, Chris. And what did you say? Well, we all kind of, well, we all kind of said no, really. Well, we didn't say no, but we didn't say yes. Yes, and right. I was like, oh God, uh, I was. I definitely wasn't going to tell you what I thought, but <laughs> I, I, because I already knew. But I read your cards anyway because I wanted to like always just assure, like a thing. I guess make myself sure. Uh, when I read your cards, your cards with with her ended up being um, flames, deceit, and the phoenix card, and that's why I told you I was like, oh. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how it's going to work out, but you're a phoenix because no matter what happens to you, you um, even if you burn to the ground, that you will rise out of the ashes. And that's what a phoenix does, you know. And you were like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, I went on to be like, I'm just telling you this because I care about you and blah, 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 blah. But like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, like one ear out about. the other, ladies and gentlemen, not even paying. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm not. Thank you, you Tracker. Could be, there could be a reason why you 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 get with somebody else. There could be a reason that needs you might need a lesson learned or something. It's not my and so there's a lot of things like I don't know. I feel like people <laughs> uh, all right. So this goes on, right? So weeks go by, weeks go by. Out of nowhere, I get this picture of her hand full of morel morass mushrooms. And she's like, hi. I'm like, oh, morale mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Oh, my God. They're out. They're up. I'm, I'm, you I had that on hunting. the show, and you were like, what? hey, Sonia, what are you been oh, doing? Oh, yeah, that's there? right. Yeah, like, that's I'm right. Yeah. Was like, looking for mushrooms. And he was and like, I I'm so something. jealous. I did feel something. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I did confess to that. But so I found out that my mom's got something, and she passed it down. I didn't want to tell that part. But anyways, uh, so this whole time. We have all these psychic people, like the one that's watching right now. I'm going to put her back up, the one with the caution tape, <laughs> that were telling me who this woman was the whole time. Well, Sonia knew it was her the whole time. And I, I felt like a light bulb went off in my head. I think in my mind, because I, I, I like I had a crush on you, I think it, like I, I, in my mind, I was just hoping it was me, even though I knew it was me. It's that doubt well. in my it's my it's my lesson that I have to learn. I try not to doubt myself, and I because when I do, I the universe likes to make me look stupid because I knew better and I know better, and the universe loves me. So, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you the truth: the universe does love her because we have not only validated it over and over and over and over again; we validated it twice more again with two different psychics, didn't we today? That you never met before, isn't that correct? Yeah. With Peter and Angela Ford. So well, I, I've never met Angela Ford, but I've watched her show several times and chimed correct. in and stuff. But I had never met her face to face, I don't think. Um I don't oh know. Oh my no. god, she did not. Did look, look what she put. You remember like, that comment? Yeah. Like yes. I remember <laughs> like I had it's funny because I like I have a pair of those high heels that she was talking about, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> and she did mention the high heels because I'll never forget that because I, I I was so embarrassed on the air when she mentioned that. I, I was know. like well, PG like, 13, I'm... PG 13, don't don't go any further. And, and she just kept going on and on and she was telling us exactly what was going on. How it was felt what, like what, what was on and on. She didn't yes. go on and on. You just well, felt like that moment had lasted forever. <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty quick about the description. 
That sure didn't feel very quick for me, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Norman, that is true. OMG was right. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, just fell over. It did, did fell all over mouth. It, it just went. But, Don't uh, ever I'm, be sorry because, like, it, you know, it could. <laughs> If it's supposed to fall out your mouth, it will. You know, you don't have to. <laughs> he needed to hear that. I did. I did. I'm very happy. We are talking. It's it's wonderful. She's a beautiful woman. Uh, I'm so happy. Uh, I'm glad we met. And uh, I think we got a lot of opportunities, a lot of plans together. Uh, I, I can't wait to see where our journey is going to go. And I told her when I got off the couch, Carolyn. I told her, I'm all hers. Wherever she goes, I'm with thee. <laughs> I am all hers. I will not fight anymore. I give in, didn't I? Yeah. And what was funny is that on the last show, your previous life, you was a, what was you? Oh, I'll put what her on you? the spot. Oh, you, a witch? <laughs> and what else? Wait, uh... What, Hold on, wait, you? we just talked about this. Yep, I, ca I call you it all the time. The queen. Yes, she was a queen, and I was her husband in the previous life. And I always call her my queen, which she is. Every morning, I call her good morning queen. I don't know, I tell her queen all the time. And it's Carolyn saying, Caroline is saying, God bless you both. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Crazy witch, good for y'all. Uh, Tim T in Florida, awesome. Uh, you all have a lifetime exploring. Uh, yes, we do, Norma, a lifetime. I told her, I don't want chapters. I want volumes, and I want books. Norma, queen, you got it. That's right. Oh, my God. Look what she just put up on the on the thing. <laughs> I cannot. But <laughs> she didn't. Yes, yeah, she did. She Ladies and gentlemen, I love her to death. <laughs> did you see what she put up there? The high heel? The high heels, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got to go back and get that segment, cut that out and play it. That That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that that came out on the last show. Everybody thought I was coming out of the closet for another reason, but no. But usually I don't talk about my personal life or any of my loved ones on the air at all because of my prior law enforcement. Uh, my <laughs> wife and I were together a couple of times in past life. See, uh, Norma's yeah. dying uh, there, Sonia. She's over roaring laughing, so... <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and 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 when they like like they said we had been together in a past life, and I I this is when I get those feelings like I know I'm going to know somebody or I, I know that I'm going to be in their life. A lot of the times, it's because I'm supposed to know that person or I have known that person, and I got those feelings immediately when I met you that I knew I knew you or I knew I was going to know you or I'd already knew you. And I think that's why it's so overwhelming, like the like these feelings that we have. It's just it's like we it's not that we were meant to meet. It's just that we were meant to see each other again, and here we are. I'll I'll, be, I'll, I'll tell you this way, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll put the mic in my in my mouth. This is my twin flame. To my heart, it is. And I would tell the world over and over. And I have. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Side of Grizzly, you'll never see again. So don't don't cry. You're gonna make me cry. I'm You're not so beautiful. crying. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. She's so beautiful. Oh man. <laughs> That's why the past cross, yes, you know, and I told her on the last show, I will walk three times and I walk five hundred miles. How's that song go? I will, I will walk, walk, walk 500, 500 miles, miles and I will walk yep, 500 miles. that good. That's right. That's right. So, Norma, it is it's very beautiful. Very beautiful. But, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to say say, uh, say thank you. I'm, I'm starting to stutter. My heart's fluttering. And I'm, I i don't know where nothing's at in my control room right now. I'm, I'm kind of lightheaded and dizzy now and got butterflies <laughs> in my stomach. And but I can't believe she jumped on because I actually asked her. And I, I did this behind your back, okay? I, and I did. I asked her and Kelly Joe to come on and surprise you at the end of your show today <laughs> and tell everybody in the world what happened. But it happened on the last show, and we did it on this show. So, you mm -hmm. know, I, yeah. So, 
but uh, I, I think we got a great future ahead of us. Uh, very interesting encounters you've got, man. I can't wait to get out there and, and like go swatch it, but I'm going to be scared. Why? I won't let that. I won't let them get you. Oh my god! I mean, god. I want to bring you back. Like <laughs> Tim T is probably saying, "Grizzly, take a bunch of apples and potatoes." I don't. So. I don't like. I feel like if it if something did happen to you, you have enough people to come looking for you. So we'll oh. find you. From... <laughs> oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from coast to coast and around the world, <laughs> this is Grizzly. We wish you a happy night, and we love you, and God bless. And make sure and watch the end. And Sonia, I'll talk to you here in a second, babe. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. should we run? <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> That's ah, it. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Ah, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. <gasps> it's a grizzly. Oh, f it. Are we going to die? I don't know. We're just going to sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>